From here on, we begin discussing the requirements of ISO 27001 and we speak about the 2013 edition of the standard, which is applicable now and is the last uh, revision of this standard. We will begin discussing about the requirement called context of the organization. And this is the fourth chapter of ISO 27001. Why we, not, we do not begin with chapter one? Because the first three chapters of the standard, which are scope, normative references and terms and definitions, are not requirements. So we will be begin discussing about actual requirements of the standard. And this is the first one. The organization has to identify the external and internal issues that are relevant to its information security management system and which can uh, affect, which are capable to affect the expected outcomes of its information security management system. What means expected outcomes? Well, in plain English, it means why the organization implemented this system. So it has to identify external and internal issues that can affect the reasons why the organization implemented this system. Now, external issues are elements from outside the organization. It includes legislation, social and cultural aspects, financial and economical or political aspects, competition and uh, market elements, trends in information security on the market, relation with stakeholders. Internal issues are things from inside the organization, like structure, governance, decision-making process, objectives, resources in terms of people, equipment, technology, culture, uh, standards uh, applicable inside the organization, contracts that the organization has signed, why this requirement? Well, it, um, it makes the organization aware of the realities outside and inside to have a clear image of where it is positioned. This is why the standard asks for identification of external and internal issues. You don't necessarily need to have a document uh, where you write down external and internal issues, but it's best if you do. You can have an Excel sheet with identification of external and internal issues. Those issues are particular to each organization, of course, but some general elements exist for uh, most organizations. And here in this presentation, I have included what is usually typical to most organizations. Now, also part of the context of the organization are the needs and expectations of interested parties. And this leads, one, leads us to the, the second uh, requirement from this chapter, which is for the organization to identify, first of all, the interested parties, meaning all the parties that do have an interest in the information security management system of the organization, and then see what are those, uh, the, the needs and expectations of those parties. Also, like in the case of external and internal issues, interested parties are typical to each organization, to its context, to its activities, to its structure, but some general elements are present in most organizations. And uh, examples of interested parties include clients, end users, employees, suppliers, authorities, business partners, competitions, uh, associations and uh, organizations from where the company is part, consultants, uh, certification bodies. All of them have requirements for the organization in terms, of course, of information security. Like uh, the clients expect their personal information, if it is given to the organization, to be protected. The uh, authorities expect the organization to be in line with legal requirements that refer to information security, like privacy legislation or personally identif identifiable information legislation. Uh, certification bodies expect that the organization respects the requirements of ISO 27001 to be able to obtain 
and to maintain the certification. Also, it's not mandatory to have them documented, but you will have a hard time demonstrating that you have implemented the requirements without a simple Excel sheet with the identification of interested parties and the requirements of those parties. The scope of the information security management system. Okay, let's say you, as an organization, have decided to implement an ISMS as per ISO 27001, and now, before you begin the actual implementation, you have to define the scope of the system, meaning the boundaries and the applicability of the information security management system, and you need to document it, you need to have it written. What about the scope? The scope means where do you plan to implement this system? You can uh, choose a part of your organization where you implement this system or it can cover the whole organization and all its locations and its activities. Now, the standard requires that when you decide the scope, you should take into consideration the internal and external issues that we have just discussed, as well as the needs and expectations of interested parties, but also the interfaces and the dependencies between the activities of your organization and activities which are uh, provided to you by others, like your suppliers, subcontractors, or any other third party, which is not be, uh, to be included in the scope of the information security management system. The most common approach is to use the whole organization as scope, to implement the, the system for the whole organization. But if you are a um, large company with many locations uh, geographically spread in um, large territories, you may decide to start the implementation for a single location or for several locations, see how it goes and then extend it or not extend the scope or not. It's up to you as an organization to choose where you are going to implement this system, for which locations and for which activities.